Tony Blair has been visiting Gaza on the eve of a major donors conference in Egypt on how to rebuild this strip. It's the first time Mr. Blair has visited Gaza since becoming the Middle East envoy to the so-called Quartet, which represents the United States, Russia, the European Union and the United Nations. Tony Blair says he wanted to hear first-hand accounts of what it was like to live there during and after the war. And he joins me now live from Tel Aviv. So you wanted to go there to hear what people were saying and what they saw. What have you heard? Obviously, it's very shocking. There's massive devastation and, and damage there, and there's a, there's a huge amount of trauma amongst the population. But also, there's a lot of determination to try and rebuild out of it. And our task, I think, is firstly, obviously, to make sure that this conference is a success and pledges the necessary money to help the Gazan people. But then, secondly, that, that we find a way out of the political impasse. But how can you rebuild when uh, Israeli obstacles remain in, in place, the siege remains? Well, I think one of the things we've got to do is, is to have a different and, and better strategy for Gaza that actually helps get material in that supports the people. And that's not just the basic humanitarian stuff like, like food and, and fuel and medicine and so on and, and proper amounts of that, but also rebuilding the infrastructure, making sure there's proper electricity and, and water that the houses that are damaged are rebuilt, that the basic life of the, 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 the community there can continue and you'll, you'll find a substantial sum of money pledged in the next couple of days to the people in Gaza. But the point is to get that money in in a way that, that works productively and, and helps Gaza get back on its feet. And for that, we need the changes, obviously, in, in terms of the crossings. I mean, when you took the job in 2007, you called for reconstruction, you called for infrastructure, you called for the, to raise the standard of living. If anything, it's, it's got worse. 80% of the Palestinians are now dependent on aid. 65% live below the poverty line. That's in Gaza, and it's true because of what has happened in Gaza over the past uh, 18 months or so. The, the people of Gaza and the private sector there has declined. It's not, of course, true in the West Bank, and it's extremely important to understand that. In the West Bank in 2008, the economy grew by six or seven percent. Uh, yeah, but there was the, the, West Ga reasonably the West Bank is not the issue here. It's Gaza that has been devastated by the war. It's Gaza that has been well, devastated I know, but by you were the, talking about the siege. You, of course, but you were talking about the Palestinian um, people as a whole, and it's important to realise that obviously two thirds of them live in the West Bank, and the West Bank has not yes, been in the same situation. Now, we need big change in the West Bank as well, Gaza. They are greatly affected by the Israeli siege, by this latest 22-day uh, war. There are people in the West Bank, and they also need a future too. Now, in respect of Gaza, we need to get the politics right, because as I said to you, it's not just the amount of money pledged, it's also resolving the political impasse. Now, that political impasse is about reopening the crossings, and that means that you have a, a viable, durable uh, ceasefire, and that we make sure that the violence stops coming out of Gaza as well as going into Gaza. Uh, but secondly, that we get a basis for a unity government on the Palestinian side. And it's precisely that that, that Egypt is working on at the moment. The problem, however, is that we are not going to get a, a solution unless, in my view, three things have to happen. First of all, we get a credible negotiating process, and that's got to be taken forward now by the new American administration, as well as the Israeli government and the Palestinians. Secondly, we need not st small steps of change on the West Bank. There have been some changes. We actually need transformative change. And thirdly, as I say, we need a different, better strategy for Gaza, one that actually helps um, the people there that are decent and want a better life and a better future actually helps them get one. Now, I think it is possible to put those three elements together in a package that would make a real difference. But in each case, it requires some, some tough decisions. And yes, of course, you're right that Israel's got to be prepared to fill, fulfill its obligations. But we also need to make sure that we stop rockets being fired at innocent Israeli civilians as well, and that we need to make sure that the security issues that Israel has, which are real, are dealt with. So you've got to deal with all aspects of this. Now, I think and it how, is possible, how are you going to deal with but Benjamin it's going Netanyahu. to be a big challenge he's, for obvious excuse me interrupting. He's going to be putting together the new coalition government. It looks like he's going to align himself with right-wing parties. Are you going to be able to work with him on this? Well, I hope so. I mean, we, we've got to work with whoever the Israeli people elect. And, and I think, you know, let's test this out rather than simply assume it won't work. Um, but those elements, the viable political process, 
change on the West Bank and a new strategy for Gaza. I mean, certainly in respect to the first of those two things, I've discussed both of those with him, and I think he understands that the only way um, that this issue can be moved forward in a way that's that's good for people in Israel, not simply the Palestinians and, and the rest of the world, is if we, we, we take a two-state solution and make it a reality. But you know what the problem is, and I know what the problem is. We've had a divided Palestinian politics, and we've had a situation where, yes, of course, I mean, people can, can disagree strongly with, with actions that Israel has taken, but the fact is there have been rockets fired at innocent Israeli civilians coming out of Gaza as well. And the existence of that strategy of firing rockets makes peacemaking so much harder. I know that you're quite enthusiastic to speak to Hamas and there has been calls within the EU. Will you get to meet them face to face? Well, there is engagement, not by me, because the quartet principles, um, and I'm the quartet representative, say we shouldn't directly engage with Hamas, but there is direct engagement happening with Hamas at the moment. Again, it's important people understand this. Egypt is talking to Hamas. Until, however, we get some sort of common basis for moving forward, it's quite hard to see what this engagement will produce. In other words, if you want a unity government on the Palestinian side, you have to have a basis for that unity. Now, I hope that we can get that basis for unity, because this would be, again, so much easier to resolve if the Palestinian politics were one united politics.